Hello, I'm Ben Godwin. Welcome to the Word Workshop recorded at the Good Springs Full Gospel Church. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. My wife Michelle and I have pastored the Good Springs Full Gospel Church since 1999. A spirit-filled church with a hunger for God and a heart for people. Good Springs Full Gospel Church is located in Walker County on Highway 269, 10 miles south of Jasper. The prophet said that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So prepare your hearts to receive from the Word, because when all else fails, God's Word works. Bibles, if you will please, to the book of 1 John. How many love the Word of God? Amen. Will you say this with me? Where He leads me, I will follow. What He feeds me, I will swallow. Amen. Praise God. 1 John chapter 5, and we will get there in a moment. We welcome you all. We're so excited about what God is doing. If you haven't noticed, God's been blessing and adding to our church. We're growing, hallelujah, and God's doing good things. And I'm glad just to be a small part of that, amen. Let me show you a couple things before we dig into the word. People say this, why do you always lift your hands during worship? To which I say, because that's what children do when they want to be held by their father. <laughs> if somebody stuck a gun to your back, what would you do? Surrender, right? If the teacher says, ask a question, you know the answer, what do you do? I'm glad you know the answer. So lift those hands in worship, amen. Somebody posted this, I like it. It says, when grace becomes an excuse to live in sin, you are no longer under grace, but under deception. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What does the Bible say? God forbid. This made me laugh. Here's Moses, uh, if he had a cell phone, looking at his GPS. Arriving in 40 years, that can't be right. <laughs> Somebody sent me this. I've used it before, but I love it. Take my hand, Peter, and don't let go. <laughs> Look at somebody say, don't let go. For all you Lego lovers out there, praise God. You never outgrow Legos, do you? Praise God. And how about this? Back off, devil. I belong to Jesus. How many will testify to that today? Here's what I want to share with you real quick before our baptism. Six signs of certain salvation. Six signs of certain salvation. How can we know for absolute certain, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we are saved? We're going to find out today. That's why I had you turn to 1 John chapter 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. We'll read verse 11 and 12 to start with. Let's look at it together. It'll be on the screen for you as well. And this is the record or testimony that God has given us eternal life. I'm going to glad you have eternal life. And this life is in his son. The next verse explains. Will you read it with me? He who has the son has life and he who does not have the son does not have life there's no middle ground is there you either have jesus or you don't you're either saved or you're lost you're either a sheep or you're a goat you're either wheat or you're a tear you're either headed for heaven or you're headed for hell right there it says if you have jesus you have eternal life how many want to thank God for that today? Then look at what verse 13 goes on to say. This gives us this assurance. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Notice this. That you may what? Know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. That means we can know we're saved. It's not a maybe so. It's not guesswork. It's not I hope so. It's not, oh, I wonder if I'm saved. You can absolutely know you're saved. 
and ready to meet God. How many have insurance? How many would say, I'm insurance poor? <laughs> We've got auto insurance. We've got homeowner's insurance. And you've got health insurance and life insurance. Well, what about what about assurance? You, got a, you probably got too much insurance, but you can't have enough assurance. Amen? That's confirmation. That's a guarantee. Remember the old song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. How many can say, this is my story? This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Amen? So let me just bring up this, this question. Let me just throw it out there. How do you know you're saved? How do you know you're saved? We're going to discuss this today. Are you saved simply because you call yourself a Christian? Are you saved simply because you attend church? Are you saved simply because you're a member of a church? You can attend church all your life and still miss heaven if your heart is not right with God. Billy Sunday, an evangelist from way back in the Prohibition era, early 1900s, he said, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to a garage makes you an automobile. Now, we should go to church, but that's not what saves you. We'll get into that. Sarah Palin famously said, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Right? Some people talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. Here's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. And by the way, he was one of the most religious people of his day. Here's what he said. Read it with me. John 3, 3 through 8 says, you must be born again. In other words, it's not optional. It's not a suggestion. It's absolutely essential. It's mandatory that we be born again. How many are glad you've been born again? Hallelujah. Salvation is a supernatural act of God. It is not a superhuman act of man. I want you to follow me now. There's a difference between what we call conversion and regeneration. Conversion is the act of man in turning from sin and turning toward God. But regeneration is the sovereign act of God whereby we are made new creatures. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me give you a scripture. I love this scripture. Titus 3 verse 5 says this, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. How many can testify and say, I've been regenerated? Amen? Amen? Yeah. Praise God. So, now let's ask this question. How can you be absolutely certain you're saved? I'm going to give you six ways you can know. All right? You may want to jot these down. Number one, the Bible says so. Romans 10, 9 and 10. I want you to read it off the screen with me. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, what? You will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord, finish it with me, shall be saved. Do you see any maybe in there? The word of God tells you how many have repented? How many have confessed with your mouth the lordship of Jesus? How many believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? How many of you have called on the name of the Lord? Then by the authority of the word of God, I declare today you are saved. Hallelujah. How many confess it today? I am saved. Praise the Lord. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. My name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. How do you know you're saved? Number one, the word of God says you are. Of course, the devil will tell you you're not saved. Tries to get you to doubt. Well, he's a liar. You stand on the word of God. Amen? 
How else do you know you're saved? Number two, there's going to be a changed life. It's more than just saying a prayer and living the same old way. I didn't get any amens on that. You heard about the guy. He said, you know, he said, I can cuss all I want. I can drink all I want. I can gamble all I want. I can run around all I want. He said, the only thing is, ever since I got saved, I don't want to. <laughs> God changed the desires of your heart. Amen? Praise God. Here's the scripture we're all very familiar with. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Say when the old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. There's going to be a change in your life. All right. Every person that's saved, there ought to be a BC, a Christ, and then an AC, an after Christ. And there ought to be able, you ought to be able to see a difference. Let's put that graphic back up. What happens when the, the caterpillar goes through this transformation? It's a process, isn't it? And what happens is something ugly becomes something beautiful. Something that used to crawl around in the dirt and was earthbound can now fly in the sky. That's what's happening in your life through the transformation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You become a new creature. Glory to God. Say it with me. I'm not what I want to be. But thank God, I'm not what I used to be. If your religion doesn't change you, you better change your religion. Because <laughs> if you really have an encounter with Jesus, it's going to change your life. Amen? If there's no change, then either a person is not truly saved or they're walking in the flesh instead of in the spirit. Now, there will be a drastic radical change when you first get saved, but how many know there's a continual change as you grow? As you look in the mirror of God's word, there will be more subtle changes. Look at this scripture with me. I love this, and I love the picture that goes with it there. A little kitty cat looking in the mirror, sees himself as a lion. 2 yeah. Corinthians 3, 18. But we all with open face beholding as in a mirror, we're looking at the word of God like a mirror, are being... Uh, we see the, the glory of the Lord and are being transformed. Somebody say transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord. What's the point of looking in a mirror? You look in a mirror to make changes, don't you? I wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and I go, ah! Why do you look in the mirror? Your hair's messed up. So what do you do? You fix it. You make a change. You look in the mirror and say, oh man, I got a stain on my shirt. So I got to clean that up or change shirts. You make changes. My face is dirty. My whiskers are growing. I got to shave. I got to make some changes. Why do we look into the mirror of God's word? Hallelujah. Because as we see what we should be, the Holy Spirit is making the change in us. Praise the Lord. Put that scripture back up for just a second. Notice this, what it says. It says, as we look in the mirror, we are being transformed. Everybody say transformed. It's from the Greek word metamorpho. We get the word metamorphosis from that. It's a total change. Hallelujah. We become new creatures. And the Holy Spirit is constantly changing our attitudes, our motives, our habits, our thoughts, our vocabulary, our behavior. Amen? Yeah. Here's the third way we know we're saved. Number three is a godly lifestyle. True Christians strive to be Christ-like. Didn't Jesus say you'll know a tree how? By its fruit. We're not perfect. Just confess to somebody beside you. I'm not perfect. Not even close. But I'm striving to please God. Striving to do what's right by his help, by his grace. Let me give you some scripture. 1 John 2, 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. How do you know you're saved? Because you're going to want to do what is right. 
1 John 5, 18, we know that whosoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one cannot touch him. Now that doesn't mean we're totally sinless. Jesus didn't save us from sin so we would keep on sinning. Amen? Now listen, let me make this very clear. We're not saved by good works. However, we have been saved in order to do good works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved. How? Through faith. That not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But how many know faith without works is dead? So it's not our works that save us. But the fact that you are saved will make you want to do good works. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. What did Jesus tell the adulterous woman? Neither do I condemn you. Go and keep on doing what you've been doing. See, that's where our generation has missed it. They think you can live any way you want, believe anything you want, still make it to heaven. That's not what the Bible teaches, my friend. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. My grace is going to enable you to live above that junk. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. So we should live a lifestyle that's consistent with biblical truth. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22 says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Another version says, abstain from every form of evil. I was reading the other day. I, was, I, I do this every day. I'll scan the headlines, and if an article strikes my attention, I'll read it. And I was reading about a hiker. He was out west. I don't know if it was the Grand Canyon or somewhere, you know, like that. And he, he was hiking along and was just enjoying the scenery and fell off the, the, the cliff. You know why people fall off of a cliff? Because they get too close to the edge. And there's a lot of Christians, boy, they're flirting with that edge, boy. How much can I get away with and still be saved? Come on now. Get away from the edge. There's an old saying, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it waddles like a duck, guess what? Well, if it looks like sin and the Holy Spirit is, is saying to you, oh, you don't need to be partaking in that, then you better believe you should avoid it. Well, hallelujah, I'm losing my amens. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Here's another way you know you're saved. Number four is love for others. Look at the scripture, 1 John 3, 14. We know we have passed from death to life. We know we're saved. How? Because we have what? Love for the brethren. You cannot go to heaven with hate in your heart. The next part of that verse says this. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Harboring bitterness and grudges is like drinking poison and hoping it'll kill the other person. Come on, get that junk out of your spirit. Praise God. Jesus forgave us of a lot worse than other people have done to us. Hallelujah. Come on, let God set you free from that. Praise God. Here's what Jesus said. He said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples. If you have what? Love. Love. It's the trademark of Christianity. How you know you're saved? You want to be around God's people. Birds of a feather flock together. I don't understand Christians who, who claim to be saved, but they don't have anything to do with church people. Because they're hypocrites. I'm glad you're perfect and got it all together. Look at this. <laughs> not going to church because of the hypocrites is like not going to the gym because of out of shape people. You go to Walmart with hypocrites. You go to restaurants with hypocrites. You go everywhere else to ball games with hypocrites. You might as well go to church with a few. God will separate them. God will deal with them. 
Hallelujah. Somebody here don't like me. Here's, here's our mentality. To live above with saints we love, that'll be grace and glory. But to live below with saints we know, now that's another story. Come on, we're going to live together eternally. We might as well love each other on the journey. Just, just say this. I know it's a little crazy, but look at somebody and say, God loves you warts and all. Freckles, moles. God loves you warts and all. We need to get off our high horse and love people. Amen. God, give us a fresh baptism of love. Praise God. People who are say they are saved and don't want to associate it with God's people are deceived. You'll want to be in fellowship with other believers. All right, here's number five. You with me? Here you go. The inner witness of the Holy Spirit. How do you know you're saved? Here's why. Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. That inner witness. 1 John 3, 24. Hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he hath given us. 1 John 5, 6 says this. It is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. 1 John 5, 10, he that believes on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Is there something inside of you that confirms and verifies that you're a child of God? The inner witness of the Holy Spirit. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. There's an inner witness that I'm a child of God. Praise God. My sister went to Oral Roberts University. This is back in the 80s and graduated and how many, how many ever know who Oral Roberts was? He was a phenomenal evangelist. He's the one who brought Pentecostalism mainstream, took it into the homes of everyone across America. And God used him in a phenomenal healing ministry back in the day. And my joke is, I, I love Oral Roberts, but I hate oral surgery. <laughs> I hate the world, the devil, and the dentist. <laughs> Not personally, but I hate going, you know. But years ago, oh, Roberts, he was in the middle of a sermon. And all of a sudden, some of his close associates and, and workers began, they thought maybe he had had a stroke. Because right in the middle of his sermon, it's like his brain got stuck. It was like a broken record. And all he could do was repeat the same phrase. He would say, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. And he just kept saying it over and over. And everybody's like, what's going on? Hallelujah. How many have that inner witness of the Holy Spirit? I know I'm a child of God. I'm not wondering. I'm not thinking possibly. I know I'm a child of God because I have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm about to preach myself happy. Praise God. Here's what Jesus said to Peter. He said, who do you say I am? I don't care about everybody else's opinion. Who do you say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And here's what Jesus said. Blessed are you, Peter, because flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. You didn't learn that from a book. You didn't learn that in college. Hallelujah. My father, which is in heaven, revealed it to you. How many are glad he's revealed himself to you? You think of how many, big, what is it, almost 8 billion people alive on this planet and God has chosen to reveal himself to you and to me? That's a blessing, my friend. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. All right, I'm about done. We're going to baptize some folks. How do you know you're saved? Lastly, number six is overcoming faith. For whatever is born of God, whatever is saved, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Finish it with me. Even our faith. Faith is the key to everything. Everything spiritually, faith is the key. It opens the door to the warehouse of heaven. All the good that God wants to do in your life is activated by faith. Notice, faith is listed as a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, but it's also listed as a gift of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12.9. Isn't that interesting? 
The fact that it's on the fruit list and the gift list, I believe is God's way of doubly emphasizing how vital faith is. The Bible says without faith, it's what? Impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must believe. How many believers are here? You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Everything you receive from God comes by faith. Salvation, forgiveness, healing, prayer answers, provision, infilling of the Holy Spirit. Everything you receive from God comes through faith. I put it out there on the sign. I hope you notice it when you drove by. Faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Faith enables you to see what other people can't see. Faith enables you to hear what other people can't hear. Faith enables you to experience things other people haven't experienced. Hallelujah. Here's what Job said, and I'm closing with this. Job said, though God slay me, yet will I trust in him. In other words, if I prosper, I'm going to trust him. If I'm broke, I'm going to trust him. Amen. If I'm sick, I'm going to trust him. If I'm well and healthy, I'm going to trust him. If I get a good report from the doctor or if I don't, I'm still going to trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God heals me or if he doesn't, I'm still going to trust him. If my family serves God with me or if I'm the only one that follows Jesus, I'm still going to trust him. If I see God's glory fall like rain in my life or if I'm in a dry spiritual desert, either way, I'm still going to trust him. Hallelujah. I'm going to trust him no matter what. Somebody say that. I'm going to trust him no matter what. Hallelujah. Let me put it in the words of an old song. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. I'm on the rock of ages. I shall not be moved. Another version, uh, a, a verse says it this way. Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. My Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved move. Listen, you need to get to the point where your faith is unshakable and unmovable. Doesn't matter what the economy's doing. Doesn't matter what the, the government's doing. Doesn't matter what's going on on the global scene and all these riots and upheaval on college campuses. It's not going to shake my faith. Hallelujah. I still believe in the God who is in control and sovereignly reigns over it all. <laughs> Glory. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Can I ask you a favor? Don't leave today unless you know you're saved. No question, no guesswork, no maybe, no wondering. You can know you are saved today. And that's why I'm excited about these Candidates are going to be baptized today. I'm so happy for them. Praise God. You may never have another chance to get right with God. Do it today. All right. Let's have our baptizees come. Dylan, if you'll come. Amber, if you'll come. Praise God. John and Jacob. Praise God. Jan is coming. Jesse. I like your spirit, Jesse. I've never met somebody that smiles as much as you do, buddy. You're a blessing. Turn around and face the audience. Hey, champ, I'm so excited for you. Lakin, been a while. We've been wanting to do it a while. We get, we're getting it done, buddy. <laughs> praise God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Hello everyone, this is Pastor Ben Godwin thanking you for watching our broadcast today. I pray it has been a blessing and a source of spiritual enrichment for you and your family. I'd like to invite you to visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more singing and preaching videos. Search for Good Springs Full Gospel Church at youtube.com. Also, please visit our website 
at goodspringsfgc.org where you can learn more about our church and ministry, read many of my articles on a variety of subjects, find a direct link to our YouTube channel, shop our online store, and donate to our church and help support our TV ministry with debit, credit card, or PayPal. Also, you can mail in an offering the old-fashioned way to Good Springs Full Gospel Church, P.O. Box 3161, Jasper, Alabama, 35502. If we can assist you in any way in your spiritual journey, please contact us. And remember, when all else fails, God's Word works.